What's going on guys? I have all of my videos from this previous weekend's Madawan New Jersey Premier Challenge on November 15th. Fortunately, there was only 5 rounds because there was 25 masters, so not many videos to be had here. There's only going to be 4 of them because unfortunately in the first round uh, I played against Joe uh, Polkowski and he had an unfortunate disconnection disconnection because his uh, 3DS died and um, you know according to the rules he receives a loss for that so uh, I have no video for that but he had a very interesting team of Tyranitar, Charizard X, Melodic Eggslash, Lando T and Rotom Mo. That was a very interesting team I wanted to see how it played out it was a very close match coming down to the timer but unfortunately his DS did die and he received a loss for that and I received a win. So in the second round I have the um, video right here for you and this is going to be against Andrew Davis and I'm going to put a link in the description uh, below for his YouTube channel is a very good YouTube channel uh, for VGC content and do please give him a check out it's be it'll definitely be worth your while and uh, he has a very interesting team of Amoongus, Kangaskhan, Azumarill, Thunderous, Heatran and Landris and uh, <laughs> this was a very very close match and you're going to actually see that unfold right before your eyes. But then, uh, yet again, um, anyone could have won this match. Um, it kind of came down to the timer. Well, it did come down to the timer. Uh, and I kind of knew I was going to lose this match at the end. So I was trying to stall him. And unfortunately, it did not work out in my favor. But he will lead with his uh, double genie. I'm going to bring in my Charizard and my Amoongus raid here. Uh, I kind of was anticipating um, either the uh, Heatran or Azumarill in the lead. Uh, so that's why I am uh, bringing my Charizard out. I do not want to take a Rock Slide. I put my own Landris in there to give him a nice Intimidate. Now, I kind of felt like in his position, he could have went for the Thunderbolt onto my Charizard, so I took it out, put my Thunder Landris in that slot. Uh, plus, I knew he wasn't going to do like any any hidden power shenanigans into that slot, so it was a safe switch in. But he does go for the Swagger into my uh, Amoongus slot, which now is the Cresselia. Not too big of a deal, and he is going to just fire off a safe Rock Slide. Landris does avoid, but I don't really think it mattered, because later on in the video, you will see that Landris just gets taken out pretty easily. And... He will activate the Keyberry for my Cresselia. He will bring out his Landris right there. Uh, didn't know at this point whether or not it was Scarfed. Um, because of the Prankster, uh, you know, uh, ability of uh, Thunderous right there. So he will fire off a Thunder Wave. Just going for um, Parafusions onto my Cresselia right there. I do get my own Rock Slide off. Does plenty of damage to both the Thunderous and the uh, Heatran, and it was really nice that I could switch into my Landorus uh, the previous turn without having an Intimidate on it if I had led with it. So he will bring out his Thunderous, um, basically just trying to prevent it from getting knocked out. He'll bring in his own Landorus right there. It was a very good switch in. Get an Intimidate on my Landorus so the Rock Slides won't be doing too, too much damage, and he'll just go for the safe Protect onto the Heatran. Uh, and I think in my position right here, I do go for the Icy Wind to slow both of his Thunderous uh, and his Heatran down um, so I can get a potential switch into my Charizard, go for a Hidden Power Ground, or just, you know, go for the o uh, the Oko onto the Heatran. I do break through the Confusion and the paral uh, Paralyzation. Uh, now, that did nothing to the Landorus, and I knew at this point that it was Assault, uh, assault Vested. And I did talk to um, Andrew after the match, and he did admit that it was Assault Vested, and uh, he was just trying to play it off, just going for the same move uh, every single time. And uh, you really can't go wrong when you go for Rocks slides you can fish for the flinch and um he was pretty much going for that at, uh, at that point on to the uh, Cresselia I do get an icy wind off and it fortunately does not knock out the Landorus um and I was kind of banking on it knocking out the Landorus because I wanted the uh Kangaskhan or the Thunderous to come back in so I can go for another rock slide onto the Thunderous uh but I'm gonna put in my Amoongus right here take the um Rock Slide that he wants to do. I was anticipating the uh, he uh, Heatran actually to switch out, and uh, I was expecting the Kangaskhan to come in and not the uh, Thunderous, um, because I kind of felt like the Thunderous wouldn't come in. Of course, you know, coming in on a Rock Slide, but very good switch in for him because the Rock Slide wouldn't have KO'd his Thunderous with an Intimidated Landorus. So I'm going to go for a uh, Protect onto my Amoongus, anticipating some kind of like Swagger play into the Amoongus. He's just continuously going for Rock Slides, which is really good in his position, going for the Flinch Chance uh, onto the Cresselia. 
And I do connect with both of us Pokemon with my Icy Wind, knocking out the Landorus, which was a huge threat to my team, be it my Charizard and um, my... Uh, who else did I bring? I, 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 just a, he's just a threat to my Charizard. He does have the Kangaskhan in the back, and I played all Kangaskhans in this uh, in this premier challenge, other than the first round uh, being the Charizard X. So he will go for the Swagger onto my Amoongus right here. Uh, now, I was trying to go for the Spore uh, in, onto the Thunderous, because I felt like if I go for the Spore into the Thunderous, I could switch into my Charizard and uh, just get clear Heat Waves off into both of his Pokemon, uh, or potentially just take his Heatran out on a switch in with a Hidden Power Ground. But as you see here, my Amoongus will be caught in confusion and I will hit myself. And now I am in, in a very, very tough predicament. Uh, as you see here, I'm going for the Moonlight, anticipating the Sucker Punch from uh, a Icy Wind. And I'm trying to stall him out at this point, and he's doing a very good job from pre preventing me from doing that. Because as you see, he's just continuously going for um, for uh, power-up punches. Now, I think what I could have done here would have been put the Kangaskhan either to sleep or go for a Rage Powder so that he hits himself uh, with the Rocky Helmet. And then I could potentially go for a side shock into the Kangaskhan, uh, but I'm just getting para hacks right here with my Cresselia, and I'm not even able to get off any type of move whatsoever. He will bring in his Heatran right here. Great switch in. A Thunderous has done, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of work to all of my Pokemon. I seen the attack coming down onto the uh, Moonga, so I protect it right there, and I actually did predict that correctly, but I felt like I could have went for an Icy Wind right there to take advantage of that, to slow both of this Pokemon down to potentially switch in my Charizard. So, I'm going to go for another Protect with my Amoongus. It's really the only thing I could have done right there. We were around uh, almost close to 15 minutes right there. I went for the Double Protect to continuously stall him out so that I could win, but unfortunately wasn't going to be the case, and uh, I did not get the Double Protect. Funny that I didn't get the Double Protect because uh, uh, Nicholas uh, Lightcore uh, got a Triple Protect against James Beck to beat him in the fifth round and they were both the finalists in this premiere challenge James Beck winning it so I brought in my Charizard right here uh, I really was in a tough predicament so I really couldn't do anything I knew he was gonna go for the attack down onto my um, onto my um, onto my Cresselia with his Kangaskhan. Uh, obviously, I don't have Protect with my Cresselia, so uh, he's just going to go for the straight-up attack on the Cresselia. Keyberry really not meaning anything against a plus-four Kangaskhan. So he will get the easy knockout, and uh, again, I attack with my Charizard into the Heatran, but that was a great Protect on his end. Anticipating the hidden power uh, from the Charizard, I'm going to bring my Landers right here. Can't really do anything. If I go for the Rock Slide, uh, it's not going to knock out either of the Pokemon. If I go for the Earthquake, it's not going to knock out the Heatran, and he can switch into his Thunderous, which he did right here. Uh, so at this point, I really was screwed, and he knew I was Scarfed with my Lander, so can't go for the Protect, I had to go for the Attack, safe Sucker Punch on Kang, uh, with the Kangaskhan, and uh, that's pretty much the battle right there. So the last couple of turns did end up pretty quickly uh, right there, uh, as you see just you know from recording it, but it was very, very long, and it came down to the timer right there, that's why I uh, just had to forfeit. And uh, I when I seen this, the, the Power Up Punches coming from the Kangaskhan at the Microcellia, I couldn't do anything from that point, and the Power Up Punch Kangaskhan is just so threatening, especially when you're trying to stall out the team and you have no way to deal with it um, but yeah that was a really really good plan on his part and uh, as he seen that I was trying to solo him out he knew he had to uh, dig himself out of a hole in which he did perfectly with the power up punch Kangaskhan I couldn't do anything against so that was my first loss I was one and one at this point Felix uh, the cat uh, um, Andrew Davis was 2-0, and, oh, and Andrew Davis ended up uh, going 3-2, uh, and two, I believe, and then making it to either... I think it was third overall and made it the top cut. Um, but that was a really good match between Andrew Davis and I. And uh, please look at, at his channel. Give him a check out. Uh, it's going to be worth your while. It's going to be in a link 
in the description below. And guys, take care. I'll bring you round three in the next video. Peace. Uh, so, we have the third round of the Madawan New Jersey Premier Challenge from this past weekend. Third round will be against David Polero, and he is Raven89 here on YouTube. And I will put a link in the description down below. Please give his channel a check out. Also has very cool and uh, good uh, VGC content. Anyway, he will have a team of Cresselia, Kangaskhan, Volcarona, Rotom Wash, Trakion, and Thunderous Eye. I have been facing a lot of Kangaskhan's and Thunderous Eyes in this entire Premier Challenge. All the teams that I faced had Kangaskhan's on them, and Kangaskhan actually did win it on James Beck's team. So, uh, I wasn't very prepared for Kangaskhan, and I think that's why I didn't do too well. But as you see in this battle right here, I screwed up. I was I was not playing very well in this entire Premier Challenge. I made a lot of screw-ups. I think it was because I was so nervous because it was my first Premier Challenge against a lot of big names, be it um, James Beck, uh, uh, Paul Chua, uh, Lightcore was there. Uh, you know, there was a lot of other big names there as well. I was just really nervous, and I really didn't play the best of my ability, and uh, you're going to see that throughout this entire video. Anyway, round three against David Pilar. We're going to hop right into this. Uh, now, I believe I lead with my um, Landorus, Charizard, and I do that because I felt like he was going to lead with his Kangaskhan. I wanted to get some sort of Intimidate down onto this Kangaskhan, and pretty much anything, uh, you know, leading against a Landorus will always take good damage from a Rock Slide. Um, now, the Cresselia was a huge threat to my team, because I didn't want him to set up a Trick Room or anything like that. I did bring the Amoongus in the back, I believe, to um, prevent him, you know, from taking advantage of the trick room but this is kind of a similar build to my original Cresselia with toxic icy wind uh, moonlight the, you know the stole out uh, big name Pokemons but as you see right here what happened what happened guys yes I forgot to mega evolve my Charizard now I ran the calculations even a life orb hydro pump under the Sun would have not KO'd my Landorus and unfortunately I do lose my Landorus right there I did get the knockoff into the Cresselia which would have helped out greatly if I would have been able to survive because then I would have been able to go for a knockoff the next turn if he would have stayed in him with, with his Cresselia the Cresselia would have been no more the Cresselia would have taken way more damage from the heat wave right there I was anticipating the Rotom switch out that's why I went for a heat wave instead of a solar beam into that slot but then yet again I didn't even evolve, <laughs> mega evolve my Charizard uh, not being able to get up the sun really did screw me over so I had to take him out right there uh, anticipating the Thunderbolt into the Charizard the life orb definitely would have taken it out if it was not life orb it would have not have um, so I had to put my Among Us in on that slot perfect 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 play from him for going for the toxic into my Cresselia the main reason why I had toxic on my Cresselia originally to stall out the walls such as other Cresselias Porygon 2s uh, and uh, just you know, and Kangaskhan's. You know, you just continuously go for the uh, Moonlight Toxic onto the Kangaskhan's, and unfortunately I just brought my Calm Mind set. Uh, I try to get some good damage into the uh, Rodom right there, and the next turn I believe I go for the Giga Drain into the Rodom with my Amoongus. Try to get it out of the way. It's the biggest threat to my Charizard, obviously. If I get rid of it, I could have a potential comeback right here, so I anticipated some type of, uh, you know, move into the Amoongus uh, with the... Uh, uh, Rodom, probably the um, Hidden Power Ice, but he did not have Hidden Power Ice. He had Protect, Will-O-Wisp, uh, Hydro Pump, and Thunderbolt, which is a really cool set because it also plays a support role, uh, you know, uh, as well as having a highly offensive role on his team. Uh, I had to go for something right here. Uh, I, I just couldn't, you know, come back from such a huge uh, loss in the first... Um, the first <laughs> first turn and I went for the heat wave seeing it that it was not a bulky Rotom and uh, the heat wave under the Sun should have KO'd this Rotom uh, but unfortunately I do miss and uh, <laughs> he just goes for the straight up Oko into my Charizard with his Rotom uh, I think if I would have mega evolved my Charizard in the first um, on the first turn this game would have been uh, a lot but it would have been a lot better on both sides uh, a lot you know it would have been a lot more entertaining and uh, probably would have played uh, out uh, 
a lot better than it did in this video, but not Mega Evolving my Charizard it was a huge misplay on my part. I did get a burn on the Cresselia, but not going to matter. I am toxic. Toxic will build up over time. I cannot switch out my Cresselia. I knew that I had no chance of winning, so I just went ahead and forfeit. It was a very fast match, but uh, like I said, unfortunately, I did not Mega Evolve my Charizard. Uh, David could not stop apologizing, but I said to him, man, hey, it was not your fault. It was my fault. I have to pay more attention to that, and if it was actually the first time I have never Mega Evolved my Charizard, but like I said uh, previously, I was really nervous the entire Premier Challenge. Uh, this was my third uh, battle, and uh, I lost my other battle um, from the uh, clock, but... Andrew really did outplay me the entire match. So I was kind of nervous. I kind of wanted to pick up a win in this and didn't Mega Evolve my Charizard. Huge misplay on my part and not Mega Evolving my Charizard. Definitely lost me the game right there. Uh, but um, David went on to be 2-1-1 uh, and, and I believe finished 2-3 uh, and three overall. Uh, and that's my overall record 2-3 and three in this Premier Challenge. Anyway, that was round 3. We will have round 4 coming up next. And as you see, against Walter Morales, I have a very good match. Probably the best match I've had the entire Premier Challenge against this team. And a uh, huge misplay on my part in that round. But you're going to see that in just one second. Catch these guys in round four. Okay, guys, we have round four against Walter Morales. Now, Walter doesn't have any type of uh, social media. He did give me a Twitter account, but it was the wrong one. I believe I just misspelled it. Um, and he doesn't have a YouTube channel, but uh, it will be against Walter Morales. He has a very interesting team. This was a very close match, probably my favorite match of the entire uh, Premier Challenge. And unfortunately, um, taking a loss because of huge misplays on my part. But it does come down to the wire. And he has a very interesting team of Ente Kangaskhan, Berlin. Him, Cliff Fairy. He has the Aegislash and Thunderous. Now the uh, Cliff Fairy was a huge threat to my team because I had no idea what it wanted to offer. It could have Ice Beam my Landorus. Obviously, it does get the Evio Light, but I completely forgot about that because yet again I was not playing great. I was not paying attention, and I was nervous. And that determined the entire battle, as you will see right before your eyes. Now. I lead with my Landris and Kangas, uh, uh, Landris and my Charizard, anticipating his uh, Breloom lead and his Kangaskhan lead, you know, to get the sp uh, fake out Spore up, uh, but he leads with his Clefairy Breloom, and I'm going to lead with my Landris Charizard. Now, the plan uh, for this was uh, to expect the fake out into the uh, Landris and the Spore into the Landris. Uh, so what I do is I take out my Landris, get the Intimidate down on the suspected Kangaskhan, which is not there, and I put my Amoongus in to take the the spore and attack with my Charizard uh, but huge misplay on my part Charizard obviously is the bigger threat uh, between the both of Landers and Charizard and he actually goes for the spore onto the Charizard and didn't protect right there, so <laughs> huge misplay on my part. Now, I had no idea what item this Berloom had. I just imagined it would have Focus Sash, but I am not max speed Charizard. Charizard only has a speed of 123 because I'm a bulky set. So I could not determine what type of item this Berloom had, and it actually had a Focus uh, it had a um, Choice Scarf on it, uh, but yet again, I could not determine that because I knew I had a very slow Charizard. So very, very good front on his end. He will put in the Entei, obviously, to um, unlock himself from that Spore that he was actually locked into, and I had no idea. I just thought he was switching out into the Entei to take a uh, suspected Heat Wave. So I'm going to put in my Landorus right here. I knew he wasn't going to Spore the Amoongus slot, so I can get another Intimidate down on him in case he wanted to go for a Rock Tomb, and the double Intimidated Berloom would have never been able to knock out my Charizard with the Rock Tomb. Probably would have done about half damage. And his Clefairy has minimized! And I was like, oh, shit, at this point. Because I have a lot of double coverage moves that don't have 100% accuracy, and even at that, uh, with a couple of minimizes, 100% accuracy moves still won't do much to the Clefairy. Now, I send a Hidden Power uh, Ground off into this Entei, knowing that it really can't do anything to my Charizard, but it can do a lot to my Landorus, especially in the sun, getting its Sacred Fire off, with a 50% chance to burn my Landorus, which he actually does, but uh, I, had no, uh, I had no chance to just... You switch into anything right there. I did not want to switch into my Amoongus, obviously. Would have been taken out. Well, probably wouldn't have been taken out, but would have done a lot of damage right there. So I had to go for that chance to not get burned, go for the Rock Slide, and I actually do not get burned nor knocked out. I get the Rock Slide off. The Entei is no more, and I miss all of my moves against this Cliff 
fairy, and he gets another minimize up, and it's really really starting to get annoying at this point. I really have no way of hitting it, and it has friend guard, so won't be doing too much to the uh, opposing Pokemon, obviously. Being the Kangaskhan or the Breloom now, unless I get off a uh, fire, um, a <laughs> heat wave off into the Breloom, uh, but then it also could just spore. So, I had to take out my Lander right there. I wanted to inter uh, in, um, to preserve the Intimidate. He goes for a Power Up Punch into the Lander slot, which is really good on his part, uh, but I do switch into my Amoongus for that uh, potential hit hit into the Landorus slot. I thought it was just going to return or double edge that slot, but since didn't have much um, uh, HP left, also I was, uh, uh, I think, double Icy Wind, so Kangaskhan would have outsped. He also could have went for the Sucker Punch, so, uh, you know, the safest uh, uh, switch in right there was the Amoongus. He is going to fire off another Icy Wind, just further reducing the... Um, speed of all of my Pokemon, but, you know, regardless, both of them were going to be slower than Kangaskhan to begin with, but he did not know that, so he's going for safe plays right here with his Clefa uh, Clefairy, and this Clefairy actually has a really weird moveset. It has Minimize, Protect, Follow Me, and Icy Wind. That's all it had. I thought it was going to have, uh, I didn't think it was going to have Protect, and you will see that uh, later on in this battle. So, he does go for the safe uh, Follow Me. For some reason, uh, I thought, uh, you know, I was facing a Togekiss, because I was like, oh, there's no point in sporing right here. He's just gonna follow me and he probably has like safety goggles but why would he have safety goggles when obviously Clefairy has the Eviolite? So I was expecting the return into the Landorus, um, but uh, you know the safest play right there would have went for, uh, go for the um, Rage Powder obviously because I would have knocked out the Kangaskhan with the uh, Rocky Helmet, which actually did happen right there. I knew I was going to lose my Amoongus. It would have been great if I would have been able to hang on, but he was a plus two Kangaskhan. Uh, actually, plus one, because I did switch into my Landorus right there. Um, now, I have no choice other than to bring my Charizard right here. I do want to get the sun back up. I can go for a Heat Wave, and uh, Clefairy really can't do much about that. Uh, but I was anticipating the Spore into the uh, Charizard slot, so I did protect that away, um, but again, uh, this Breloom is Scarf, so he does not want to go for uh, any type of move that is non-damaging, and the safest play for him to do was been, would have been the Rock Tomb, because it would have knocked out my Landorus, knocks, it uh, Oko's my uh, Charizard without an Intimidate, which you see right here, yep, <laughs> I actually did not protect, I went for the attack right there, uh, I didn't think the uh, Rocky Tomb would have uh, KO'd, um, but unfortunately it did, and uh, I honestly, you know, at this point, I said I didn't think he was Scarf, so I thought he was just going to put the Charizard to sleep, uh, or just put the Spore down on the Cresselia, so I just unfortunately lose my Charizard right there. I can just fire off Earthquakes, obviously Cresselia has Levitate to get some good damage off, and potentially hitting the Clefairy, which I do not do, um, but the Breloom is free to just fire off Rock Tombs right here, and that's uh, exactly what he does. And I'm still trying to uh, hit, get hits on the Clefairy. I do want to slow the Breloom down, which I do do at this point. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's just going to fire off Follow Me's, and I knew he was going to do that. I double coverage moves, no reason for me not to go for another Icy Wind, just to uh, potentially knock out this Breloom, which was the biggest threat to both my Landers and my Cresselia. The Clefairy really couldn't do anything. I actually do connect against the Clefairy, but he now connects with the Rock Tomb against uh, my Landorus. Landorus is KO'd. Now, at this point, we were both playing uh, the clock. Uh, I don't necessarily know why I went for a Calm Mind Raid here. I think I wanted to uh, increase my... Um, special attack right there to get an Oko onto the Berloom, but then yet again, the <laughs> Psy Shock still should have um, KO'd it regardless. Now, uh, this is where I really start playing like crap. I obviously should have won, but huge misplays on my part. I went for the Psy Shock into the Clefairy, anticipating to follow me, but then yet again, if I go for the Psy Shock into the Berloom, it still will go on to the Clefairy he follows me, so I don't know why I was targeting down the per Clefairy right there. As he's seen, I was trying to target down the Clefairy, so uh, he just goes for the safe Protect. I had no idea he would have had Protect, but then yet again, if I went for the Psy Shock into the Berloom right there, I would have won. <laughs> so, I have no idea what I was doing at from this point on, and uh, I just go for another Psy Shock. Now, I go for it into the Berloom, but obviously, I cannot... I uh, hit the Berloom because he did follow me, and uh, this was actually the last turn. This all came down to the timer. If I would have hit his Clefairy, I would have won, but then yet again, if I would have just went for the Psy Shock to begin with onto the Berloom, I would have won regardless. So that was definitely a match I should have won, but, uh, you know, I 
huge misplays on my part and uh, was not really paying attention. Should have known beyond that point that the Berloom had the Scarf and that he could not protect and going for the Psy Shock onto the Berloom would have been the better option. And also, uh, you know, playing better uh, in the match earlier on, knowing that the Berloom had the Scarf, I probably would have been able to win it uh, and not having to come down to the uh, timer. But unfortunately, I did lose that match because of huge misplays on my part. That was a very interesting match. I was not expecting to minimize from the Clefairy. Maybe like the Thunder Wave and uh, you know, the Protect Follow Me and the Safe Ice Beam, but yeah, I just, I had no idea why I went for the Psy Shock into the Clefairy when I could have just went for it onto the uh, Burloom, and he actually said that, he was like, oh, well, I lost when I went for that, you know, Psy Shock into the Clefairy, and then he seen that I went to the Clefairy, and he's like, what? <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately I lost this, and, um, you know, I, 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 I hate, keep using the, um, Excuse of me being nervous, but, uh, you know, I was very nervous the entire Premiere Challenge. I really did want to do well, um, but uh, being nervous, huge misplays, not paying attention the entire time, really wear on you, and uh, obviously it did on my record being 2-3 and three overall. Uh, I think if I would have won one more match, I would have been a lot more satisfied to myself in the long run, and I could have bubbled into top cut. Uh, There's a lot of 3-2s, James Beck went 3-2, and he won the entire thing, so, uh, you know, things could have ended a lot better if I did win uh, at least one more match, but unfortunately not going to be the case, but there are more Premier Challenges later on, and we still have one more round to do, and the last round is probably the funnest round of them all, obviously, uh, both opponents have no chance of getting in the top cut, so we were kind of just screwing around, laughing it off, and having fun in the last battle, which we will we'll see in the fifth round now. Alright, and we have round five, guys. This is the last round of the Matawan, New Jersey, November 15th Premier Challenge. Challenge. Unfortunately, there was only five rounds, and again, like I had said, uh, I got a win in the first round to an unfortunate disconnect. Got two losses in a row because I wasn't playing the best of my ability, not paying attention. Actually, three losses in a row. And the last round you have before your eyes against a very interesting team, as you see on the left-hand corner of your screen, we have a team of Amoongus, Kangaskhan, Greninja, Blaziken, uh, Eggislash, and Thunder. It's a very offensive team, and... Um, this battle will be against Daniel O'Brien, and he does not have a YouTube channel, but he does have a Twitter account, which I'll link down in the description below. Uh, you can hit him up at, uh, I think it is D.O. Uh, uh, D. O'Brien VGC. So, uh, very cool guy. Uh, we were having a great match, uh, kind of just screwing around the entire time. Obviously, both of us wanted to win at the same time, but if we didn't win, it really wouldn't have mattered because we couldn't have made it in the top cut anyway. So, it was kind of like a fun match between the both of us. We were laughing a lot of things off, and it did come down to the wire, so very good battle at that. So we're gonna hop right into this. He did bring his Greninja, Amoongus, Blaziken, and the Kangaskhan. Obviously Kangaskhan is always a huge threat, and I was bringing my Landorus to every single one of the battles, and I did not bring my Sylveon whatsoever in the entire <laughs> Premier Challenge because there are so many Kangaskhans, and Kangaskhan has the potential to Oko the Sylveon with the double edge, but most of them were just running the safe power-up punch, fake out, uh, return, and... Um, uh, soccer punch, so usually the, you know, the traditional set for the Kangaskhan, max speed, max attack, usually jolly. Alright, so obviously Kangaskhan's going to Mega Evolve before my Charizard, didn't really matter, I have a slow bulky Charizard, he leads with his Blaziken, Kangaskhan, which is a really good lead because he can get a fake out off, um, and then, you know, let Blaziken, um, uh, get a speed boost, but uh, I was expecting Blaziken to actually go for the superpower. You know, he was going to outspeed my Heatran regardless. Uh, so I did protect with my Heatran, which is really a good protect on my part. Even though the Blaziken did protect, the uh, Kangaskhan just went up... Went for the straight up power punch uh, into the Kangaskhan. Now, I was anticipating the fake out into the, um, the uh, Heatran and the... Uh, the uh, superpower, so that's why I protected Heatran and just went for the attack with the Charizard. Uh, I do have a bulky Charizard, for so if he did fake out the Charizard, it didn't really matter, and the Blaziken can't do much against the Charizard, so no point in protecting the Charizard right there, which did pay off. I got a lot of damage into the Kangaskhan. I do bring in my Landers to get an Intimidate down on both of the Pokemon, but he read me like a book! He read me like a book! I laughed so hard, and I was like, dude, that was such a good call. And he went for the Hidden Power Ice into my Landers, and he is Expert Belt. Obviously, you see no life... Uh, uh, orb damage right there so I was like holy crap that was beautiful that was beautiful but I do fire off a uh, another heat wave right here and I do get a lot of good damage off into the blaze again I know heat waves would have done a lot of damage to it being potentially a two hit KO uh, with the life orb damage but uh, I do believe it missed the Kangaskhan which was huge so I'm gonna put my Heatran in there to take advantage of the Sun uh, at this point I knew I had to do something I knew he was uh, probably going to protect with his blaze again anticipating the um, 
uh, the Earth Power into that slot, but I just went for a Heat Wave. I needed to get the Kangaskhan out of the way. As you see how much damage it did to my Cresselia, it was a huge threat to my team, and Kangaskhan was a huge problem for my team. Uh, it just, it just KO'd a lot of my Pokemon very, very easily, and the only check I really had to that was the Landris and Cresselia. I lost the Landris in this battle, so I know I had to go for some type of move to take it out, and I did right there with the Heat Wave with my, um, with my Heatran. Um, now, he is going to bring in his Greninja right here. I couldn't switch out my Heatran. I didn't want to switch it into anything that could damage my Charizard, so I just went for the attack, and I could not believe that Superpower did not Oko my Heatran, and he probably was not expecting that either, so he goes for the straight-up attack into the Cresselia, goes for a gunk shot, gets a critical hit, KOs my uh, Cresselia, but I do fire off a Heat Wave and KO his Blaziken and get his Greninja down very, very far in HP range, and uh, I kind of said to myself, I may be able to win this battle if he has an Amoongus, and he had the Amoongus. Now, um, I do bring in my Charizard right here, obviously I had to do that, and I just went for the double attack, I knew the Greninja had to attack either one of my Pokemon, so there was no point in protecting either one of the Pokemon, but he has Rock Slide! He had Rock Slide, I was not expecting that full out uh, physical Greninja, and uh, I do not flinch with my Heatran, connect with both of the Pokemon under the sun, get the Oko on the Among Us, KO the Greninja, and I win my second battle of Madame on New Jersey Premier Challenge right there, guys, against... Dan uh, Daniel O'Brien <laughs> was a very good battle. Very funny one at that, obviously. We both could not make it into top cut, so we were just kind of screwing around. But it did come down to the wire, and I ended up uh, winning. Um, that was like uh, one of the matches trying to get into top cut right there, and uh, I won because of that reason with the Heat Wave non flinch on the Heatran. I probably would have freaked out, but I laughed it off in the end, and so did Daniel. Anyway, guys, I went 2 and 3 overall. I could have done a lot better. I think with this team, I could potentially have went at least 3 and 2 or 4 and 1. Uh, you know, I didn't play the uh, timer as well in some of the matches where I was trying to stall out, and <laughs> I uh, made a lot of huge misplays. Not a mega evolving my Charizard and just not going for the Psy Shock into the Breloom, but I can't do anything about it uh, from this point on. Uh, I probably could have played a lot better, well, definitely played a lot better, but I can't do anything anymore. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and please look forward to more Pokemon VGC on my channel. Check out all these guys I did battle, whether it be Twitter or YouTube accounts, down in the description below, and comment, guys, they have nothing else more to say. I probably will be going to uh, uh, probably three or four more Premier Challenges before Winter Regionals. Um, and probably go to two Winter Regionals. I really uh, do love the Pokemon community. I went to this Premier Challenge not expecting too much. Um yesterday, and uh, everyone was really great. Everyone I battled, win or lost, was awesome. Awesome community, and uh, it was really awesome just talking about the game and just general uh, bullcrap uh, with all the other players, and I uh, met a lot of awesome people. Probably keep in touch with them through YouTube and Twitter, uh, you know, later on down the road, and, you know, uh, going to more events with them. So, guys, uh, thank you for watching, and please take care.